The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of ONTV's management, staff, or board of directors. Detroit Basketball! And hello and welcome into Views from the Sidelines. Got Malik Hill with me. Joey Tysick as always. And uh, NBA playoffs. We're actually going to talk about the NBA today. Um, we're going to start, though, with um, some NFL draft talk, since we haven't been talking too much about uh, that kind of stuff. But we're going to do a mock draft show uh, next week. And, um, yeah, it's going to be weird talking about the nba but I, i'm kind of excited meaningful basketball is back yeah <clears throat> after march madness ended right we're rolling we're, we're rolling yeah and we don't have to yeah, talk about that team here. you know we'll get there <laughs> but that, that's a summer topic but, the season is over thank the basketball gods yeah we get to watch good that basketball it's over. hopefully hopefully good basketball yeah. um but like i said we're gonna start off with a little draft talk just to get things going and um yeah, so we're going to do like three players that we like in this draft, and then we're going to do who we think the Lions should take um, for their draft pick this year. So, Malik, who's uh, the first guy on your list that you like in the draft? doesn't have to be first round even, just somebody yeah, that you so like. so this first guy is a receiver. <clears throat> I think he might go second round because his hype kind of built after his – the combine and his pro day, mm-hmm. and people going back and watching his highlights and seeing how much of a playmaker he is. Uh, Xavier Leggett, mm. wide receiver from South Carolina, <clears throat> a real country boy. He's like fringe first round right now. A yeah. lot of people think at, at the end of the first round, there's a lot of wide receivers that could kind of bounce in and out from there. So. Yeah, I, because pe- most people watch the SEC for Georgia and Alabama and LSU schools like that. Yeah, <clears throat> He was at South Carolina. And even though they had an up-and-down season, Spencer Rattler had a really good senior year, and he was Spencer Rattler's go-to guy. Mm-hmm. Xavier Leggett is 6'1", over 220, like almost 225. He's built, like, country, he's the definition of country strength. Yeah. And he's, he kind of sounds like Randy Moss when he talks, which made, made me like him even more. <laughs> but, yeah, he's, he's a specimen. He has 4'4 speed, mm-hmm. almost like high 4'3s. He's lightning quick when he gets the ball in his hands. But he's also just a really good overall receiver. Yeah. And I think he could be an absolute weapon in the league. Mm. So I, I'm a huge fan of Xavier Leggett. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'll go with my wide receiver then. Uh, another most likely later round. He could probably go second round. Um, I think there's thought that it's probably more like third round. But, again, it all depends on. Um, where people are going. But I'm going to bring up Ricky Pearsall. Nice. I I really like his game. His his metrics turned out really good. Um, He had had one of the highest verticals, which wasn't, like, super surprising if you saw some of his highlights. Um, Didn't have, like, an insane season at Florida, but he he definitely improved each year. Um, I think he was still under 1,000 yards this year. Um, But their offense isn't, like, super explosive. But what I like about Ricky Pearsall is he's just a guy that goes and gets the ball. And he can give you big play opportunities. And it just seems like he's a fighter. Like, I feel like if the Lions didn't have a Monroe St. Brown, he would fit in really well. Because I see him more as a slot guy um, in the league, not necessarily an outside guy. He's six one. He's like he's under 200 pounds. So he's not huge, but he's, he's built pretty well. Um but again, I just like his tenacity to go for the ball, and I think he could be a really good uh, piece to an already solid um, team in the draft. So I really like him. Okay, my second guy. He's very well known to college football fans. I think most NFL NFL fans don't know him. Uh, he won the Nagurski Award last year for top defensive player or top linebacker. I can't remember which one, but 
he won that award. Linebacker from NC State, Peyton Wilson. Mm. I've been watching him for three, four years. He's been playing ever since he stepped on the field at NC, at NC State. And his production got better and better every year. Yeah. Last year he had a hundred and he had a high number of tackles, like well over like a hundred forty. He had like six or seven sacks. He had a few picks. He can almost do it all at the linebacker position. He's six four, two thirty five. And what really blew him up was his combine. Mm-hmm. Four four three forty. Yeah. Uh, what was his thirty four inch, thirty four and a half inch vertical? Mm. Like you watch him on tape and you don't assume he's just like this freak athlete. Yeah. And he just blew up the combine. Like he has all the production and the tape. And then he went into the combine and showed he was super fast and he can jump. Yeah. So he he has like everything you want in a linebacker, and I think he's going to be a star for whoever he's for. Now he might get a, some flags because he's very aggressive and he likes to take people's heads off. Mm-hmm. But I I just love the way he plays. Yeah, no, that's a good one. Um, for my second one, I think I like a lot of wide receivers. I'm not going to do another wide receiver though. I really. I, I'll be kind of basic here again. I really like Michael Penix Jr. I feel like him going late first round, possible second round, depending on, again, the quarterback position this year is going to be really interesting um, because your guy J.J. McCarthy keeps climbing farther and farther. This uh, CBS mock draft that I'm looking at right now has them taking J.J. at three. Um, It's just too high. It's too high. Over Jaden Daniels. That's a whole nother Whole nother topic. I haven't heard any. Yeah, that's 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 just nonsense. Um, but I really like Michael Penix, and I think a lot of it is for the value that you could get for him. Not using one of those top uh, picks um, that are expected. I think Michael Penix could be just as good as some of those other top guys. I'm not so sure about JJ. I have a lot of questions about it. Drake May has gotten a lot of hype, but I'm I'm not like as hyped about Drake May this year. Um. Even Caleb Williams, like I, my number one quarterback is Jaden Daniels. But again, that's also, he's mm. somewhat of a project. But um, like I'm not even completely sold at Caleb Williams being this franchise guy. Uh, so I'm not sure. I would rather wait till later in the draft and get a guy like Michael Penix Jr. that has played in lots of games, has a lot of experience. I know people like the young guys, um, but I like guys that have gotten a lot of meaningful reps. And I think. He's proven that, you know, he's been able to do it. He did it at Indiana, and then he transferred, went to Washington, had a really good season, came up just a little bit short, but I think he's he's the real deal. He's He's got some speed to him. He's got a good arm, you know, pretty basic stuff, but I just like where he could fall in the draft for somebody, and I think that's why I like him in this draft is where people can get him. Okay, my last one, it's a lesser known I had to throw one of those in there. Mm-hmm. It's a guy that, as a college football sicko, <laughs> I've been watching him for three, maybe four years for like his entire career at this point. Because mm-hmm. his freshman year, I believe, was the COVID season. Okay. And it's a kid from South Dakota State, a running back named Isaiah Davis. Mm-hmm. You look at this dude's production over four years, it's ridiculous. I mean, his last two years... He had 33 touchdowns and well over, like, 3,500 rushing yards. Mm -hmm. His first two years, like, over 1,500 rushing yards and 17 touchdowns. Yeah. He has size. He's 6'1", 220. Mm -hmm. He ran a 4'5", but he has game speed. Yeah. He's a tough runner. I I, I just – this is it's one of those guys where – there's a chance he might not make it in the league just because the politics of the NFL. Mm-hmm. But if he gets his chance, I just believe Isaiah Davis, Davis is going to shine. Yeah. Like, now he he might have some tread on his tires. Mm-hmm. He got a lot of production in college, but he did nothing but produce. Yeah. It's also at the FCS level, but right. you look at the size, you look at the production, you look at how he runs, he's an NFL player. Yeah. And if I'm like the Dallas Cowboys, any team looking for a running back, if yeah. I'm Jim Harbaugh, I'm drafting Isaiah Davis in like the sixth round because hmm. he's going to fall. Yeah. 
And he he has so much talent. He is a natural running back. Mm-hmm. And guy, I think I I think he could stick in the league for a long time. I like Isaiah Davis a lot. <laughs> nice. Um, my final guy. I'm I'm not as much of a sicko in as far as football prospects go. Um, but I, I've been doing my fair share. But I'll stay I'll stay towards the top end still. Um, uh, we said it before. One of my shout outs though, I'll say real quick. I still think Mike Sainer still could be really good for this oh, league. Yeah. I think you can slot him in. He a could lot be of a spots. really good slot corner. Um, but my pick here is. It's still a first round guy. He's going to be a top mm, top twenty probably. I'm going to go with Leatu Latu. Listen, man. Uh, if he is, somehow fell to the Lions, uh, Lions would, fans should rejoice. I would die because he might be the best pass rusher. And I'm going to let you get to. Yeah. It. I'm sorry. No, you're good. <laughs> you're sorry. good. But I, I feel the same way. I don't think there's a way that he drops. But you know, you never know with the draft. But I mean, he's six five. He ran a four six. Like, his metrics are insane. His pass rushing production was better than almost anybody. Yeah. Um, so he came up huge in the combine even just to reassure people that he is that good. Um, yeah, He had a 32-inch vertical, which is pretty good for a big guy. Um, and I just I just like his game. He's, he's quick. He gets to the ball. Um, I hate that you even mentioned the Lions because I don't. That's wanna, what I, it, I don't want to get my hopes. I, up I like don't that. see him dropping that far, but it it would be incredible yeah. if he somehow fell all the way to twenty nine. <laughs> yeah. Unless the line, if the Lions like want to grab somebody they want, yeah, I could see them moving up a few spots. But yeah, yeah, it, it would be incredible if he fell that far. Yeah, but uh, I just like his game, and I think he's going to give his full effort wherever he goes. Listen, there, there's a lot of hype on Chop Robinson. Yeah. So. And he's like been, Jared he's, versus Dallas Turner and Chop Robinson could go ahead of Leatu Latu. Okay, you know what? In this mock draft that I'm looking at, Leatu Latu is at 27. Hey, listen, that's, that's, Chop, Chop Robinson didn't he run like a 442? Chop Robinson, I believe. Uh, something like, like that. his height went through yeah, the roof. His is crazy combine. too. Yeah. So in this mock draft, we'll I'll just mention it. 27 is Leatu Latu. 28 is Chop Robinson. 29, the Lions are taking Darius Robinson. For Missouri. Mm-hmm. So there's three edge guys going back to back to back to back. Okay, now, who would you want the Lions to take? What would be, like, your number one option for the Lions? Well, I... At, like, at that position. Like, they have to stick to 29. So we I don't the, worry I, about the, the dream for so many people has been Kool-Aid McKinstry. Mm-hmm. Because there's a good chance he could fall to 29 or, like, early second round. Right. Because Kenyon Mitchell... Is like being touted, touted as the corner of the draft now. Mm-hmm. The kid from Toledo, uh, Terry and Arnold from Alabama, Nate Wiggins from Clemson, Cooper DeGene, Cooper DeGene mm-hmm. who I also think could be a good pick for the Lions, yeah, because he's also a high level return guy. So I think either Kool Aid McKinstry or Cooper DeGene, it would be it would have to be like more of a sell on Cooper DeGene just because mm-hmm. you don't see <laughs> white corners often, <laughs> yeah. But all it takes is watching some highlights and tape to see he's a freak athlete, right. And a guy that's better than most players on the field at all times. Mm-hmm. So I think either Kool Aid McKinstry or Cooper DeGene would be great at twenty nine. Okay, just because the corner thing. Yeah. Okay. So you're looking at corner. But I like that. If Latu fell though, yeah, I you take him. Yeah, I without say, thought. I would say you run up there. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I think the back half of this first round is going to be pretty wild, um, because I've seen it go all over the place. Um, the one that I've been sold on lately. And I don't know, these mock drafts keep moving them farther up, but the one that I've been sold on lately is Jackson Powers Johnson. Refresh my memory, please, sir. <laughs> Interior lineman out of Oregon. I, okay. I think he was he was their guard, right? Was he a guard? Or did he play center for them? Jackson Powers. Uh, I can't remember exactly. But so the the idea though is that, you know, we have Frank Rag now. He's aging. Who knows how much longer he's going to play. Graham Glasgow getting older. Like, our offensive line is our our powerhouse, but they're getting older. I would like to, at this point, be able to take some. Um... He's listed as the number two center. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, I just want more depth for our offensive line because that's been our, our powerhouse for forever. So, if we can keep going and keep – um, developing these young guys and keep this offensive line rolling, 
to be able to learn and kind of sit back behind Frank Ragnow and all these guys, I think could be really useful. Now, again, the whole cornerback situation has kind of changed the landscape of maybe who they draft, but I would just like, I like the offensive line depth because that is our, our strength to this team. And I would give these young cornerbacks that we signed with Emmanuel Mosley, um, Amik Robertson, and um, Carlton Davis, I would give them more of a chance than having to spring in some uh, another rookie right mm-hmm. away and keep the offensive line rolling, I guess, if that makes sense. Um, so that I think that would be my pick. But, again, if, if Latu fell, I'm taking him. There, there are many good options. Mm-hmm. This is a deep crop in yeah. this draft. Um, the one thing I do want to say, I don't know if you saw it recently. I didn't look t- listen to the whole interview, but there was an interview with like Dan Campbell saying that they might get weird in the draft. Does that make you nervous at all, or do you trust them? I trust them. Uh, with their track record, Yeah, I think Lions fans can live with them taking a few chances. Mm-hmm. With everything you have coming back and your free agent signings, Yeah, they can take a few shots on guys that they – It's ne- I, I don't think it's ever good to try and be the smartest guy in the room. Right. But if it's it's a, if it's somebody you really believe in, mm-hmm. uh, how can we not trust him at this point? Yeah, it still makes me nervous, but I, I'm I'm curious as to what that means. I know they always are looking for their culture fit kind of guys, but yeah. who knows? All right, so next week we'll do more of a full mock draft. We'll talk about each guy a little bit um, as we go through and draft them, but um, that should be fun. I'm kind of excited. I've I've done a little more research than I have in the past uh, for this draft, so it should be fun. All right, moving on to the NBA. The first thing that I wanted to bring up really quick, though, John Tay Porter. Officially officially banned from the game of the NBA. I don't even remember. Has has this happened to someone before in the NBA? Um, Probably. I really don't know. Yeah. I mean, there's... There's been guys that have been like blackballed from the NBA, but oh, yeah, that that's different though. Yeah, like o- open banning, right? Like I, I haven't seen I, it happen many times. Not that I can think of, at least off the top of my head. Um, but Jonte Porter was found uh, with illegal gambling, apparently on his was it a personal account? I can't remember the exact thing. He was gambling on some NBA games through somebody, um, through like an associate. None of the the gambling that he personally did was on any games that he played in, but he has also been linked to giving advice to other people to bet all of his unders, and then he would go suspiciously out of the game early and not get anything. His metrics on hitting the under, like these gambling websites have, you know, all the statistics, and... They showed that he hit the under like eight of nine times and that somebody like parlayed all of his unders once and they bet $80,000 on it and won $1.7 million. And he was found linked to that betting. There was a report today that said he bet on Raptors games. Was there? Yeah. Okay. I I, I believe Adam Silver said his biggest sin was that he bet on okay. like Toronto Raptors games. Okay. Um. So either way... He's done a lot of wrong. This is nowhere near the Jamison Williams thing. This is full on trying to rig the game. Um, you know what I think is funny? What? He's probably going to go overseas and make more money. Yeah. Whether playing or just doing whatever he does, I think he's going to be fine. Yeah. So, I mean, it might it, hurt him for a little while, but he'll probably still go somewhere and play basketball and, and be at, okay. At the end of the day, his his family's pretty well off. I hate to. You know, yeah, be that way, are. but you know, his his is he he's older, Michael. He's the little, younger brother. Yeah. yeah. So Michael Porter Jr. is you know one of the budding stars in the NBA. Uh, so if he you know really ran into trouble, I would think that he'd be okay. But um, yeah, it, it's kind of a wild thing to just see somebody, especially such a <laughs> I hate to say like mid level player, but bottom of the barrel player to be doing this um just seems wild i want to almost see what like what his nba contract was it had to be very minimal let's see 
because he was like a two-way player, right? Yeah, he he wasn't making a lot of money. So he earned two point three million dollars over three seasons from the Grizzlies. So in the shortened season, he made two hundred thousand. In twenty 2020 twenty and twenty twenty one, he made one point nine million, and then twenty twenty one and twenty twenty two, he made about three hundred thousand dollars, and then this year his two way contract was about four hundred and eleven thousand dollars. I don't know. That's still not too bad, though. <laughs> I mean, for of course for us, right? <laughs> for people that aren't athletes, yeah, that's great. Um, but for an NBA player, that's yeah, that's not a lot. Yeah, but to also be feeling like you have to bet money to make more money on yourself, just I don't know. Do you really think? Uh, no, I, I, I'm not sure if that had anything to do. It with didn't. I know but. gamblers are just there for the game, the love of the game, and the rush. Yeah, I don't think he was suffering. Right. Anyway, it's wild, and uh, that's about all. I just wanted to mention it because it's a pretty big, pretty big topic. All right, on to the actual play-in games. Last night, the Lakers played my New Orleans Pelicans and beat them, unfortunately. So the Lakers are now going to play the Denver Nuggets in the playoffs. We'll get to that in a minute. But um, off this game... Zion Williamson had 40 points in this game. He was he was fantastic. And he was absolutely fantastic. The Pelicans came back from I think 18 points down was the most that they were down. And um oh, Zion had 40. He was being a bully late in the game. Like yeah. he was bullying LeBron, he was bullying Anthony Davis. There was a point where like it they realized they like didn't couldn't do anything. Right. Like he was jumping around over mm-hmm. he was he was just getting what he wanted. Yeah. At some point. And so then late in the game, I think it was like a minute and a half left or something like yeah. that. He came down awkwardly. Apparently you said it's a cap. It, it was officially. a it was a floater that tied the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and his his foot kind of bent weird and apparently At first it, when he jogged down the court, I thought nothing was wrong. Yeah. And then he like dropped his head and started walking to the bench. I was like, Oh no. Mm-hmm. And about 30 seconds later, he just was stomping off angry to the locker room. Yeah. And never came back, and he won't be back for their next game. It it was all – I think it's the quickest I've seen somebody go from, like, playing an elite game to just gone. Yeah. Um, Officially listed as a calf sprain, like I said, he will not play in – they play Friday? I believe so. Um, Friday in their final chance to get into a playoff series. Um, And, yeah. Brandon Ingram also played terribly, but I think he was still kind of – he's been nursing an injury the last so many weeks of the season. Uh, it's just – it's another unfortunate run for these Pelicans. I think that franchise just has something. Yeah. Yeah. They've like lost, a black cat. They it's, now have lost eight of their last nine home games. Like, come on. And again, like, Trey Murphy had a clutch basket. He – he shoots the ball so high, it's insane. It's, yeah, it's strange. It's crazy. You're like, wow, and then it just swishes right through. It's kind of pretty, pretty, but it's hard to to judge. Yeah, Zion had 40, and the next highest score was Trey Murphy with 12. Yeah. CJ McCollum? Another dud. Ah, that's a... Ever since Portland made the Western Conference Finals in, what, 2019 or 18? Yeah. He just has not done it again. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah. It's yes, unfortunate. Yeah, so I don't know where... Jose Pel- Alvarado was better than him. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. I, I don't know where the Pelicans go from here. Um, We'll get... I mean, they're going to play the Kings. We'll get to that game, too. But um, at this point, I'd, I'd rather see the Kings play. Because who knows how long a calf strain is going to take to mend. And I'd rather see a good series. Like, the Kings in OKC could be a fun series. Yeah. Um, So at that point, I think I'd just rather see that. And I don't know. Do you know what happened to Jonas Valanciunas? What do you mean? Exactly? Like they were playing Larry Nance at the end of the game. I didn't even. I don't, I don't know if he was in foul I just, trouble. I just. I honestly that. did not notice until you just said something. Because Larry remember, Nance was playing. Larry Nance missed a free throw that could have tied the game at one point. Not that it fully mattered. The Pelicans, for some reason, went into a zone and gave up a couple threes. Maybe just his pace just didn't fit the game anymore. Maybe. Because they were getting up and down with Zion, and mm-hmm. Jonas just would have been lumbering up and down the court. Yeah. Not sure. 
but it was weird, confusing. Anyway, Pelicans, they get another chance, but I, I don't know. I almost don't want them to, unfortunately. Um, then the second game was Kings and the Warriors, as I just alluded to. The Kings won pretty Listen, handily. Can we start with the team that lost first yeah. and give the, team, give the team that won respect second? Mm-hmm. Okay. But... So the Warriors got their butts kicked. Is it over? I think it officially is. And I've been on the bandwagon. I said if they won and got into the playoffs, they would be a nightmare for one of these teams. Um, but I I think it's over. I think as it is, it's over. I think they can retool and get back. But I think I think Clay is done. Zero points. It was bad. 0 of 10 from the field, 0 of 6 from 3. Yeah. Keegan Murray lit him up. <sighs> he was, yeah. He looked like Clay. <laughs> mm-hmm. He looked like prime Clay. Yeah. Um, Clay struggled heavily. Draymond actually wasn't too bad. Um, I just feel like this supporting cast just doesn't, yeah. they don't play defense like they have in the past. They don't. Kuminga, he just doesn't help. Mm-hmm. He doesn't help them. He does. He shows great flashes individually and doesn't do much else. Yeah. You shouldn't have to depend on Brandon Pajemski to be big in a playoff game. Right. And you shouldn't have to have Trace Jackson Davis play such a huge role mm-hmm. to try and get to the playoffs. Yeah, the roster construction, is it's just not yeah, it's not good enough. And another thing, like, I'm a huge Chris Paul fan, have been since he came into the league. I think he's cursed. <laughs> I think he's officially cursed. He just Amen. he can't get on a team and just ride somebody's coattails. It just it he I, made it to one finals. Yeah. That's pretty much as far as we might see it go. Mhm. But um yeah, I think Chris Paul needs to go, Clay Thompson needs to go. Draymond depending on the money should go. What do you keep Draymond for at this point? Because I don't think leadership yeah. is yeah. 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 Um and then um Andrew Wiggins has got to go at this point. I think so. So it might be a tough retool to get back before, you know, Steph's career is over. But I, I think having Steph, there's a chance. I almost think, and I don't, a lot of people were bringing it up last night, though. He looked so good off the ball. Maybe they bring in like a better point guard than Chris Paul, but they run him more as a shooting guard once Clay goes and they just run him around like crazy. I don't know. Can his body hold up? I don't know. He's starting to get to that point where maybe it'd be tough, but yeah, I don't I don't know. It it would be a tough retooling cuz they got to get a lot of pieces and kind of fast, but I would assume getting off from Clay and Draymond, they would clear up a decent amount of cap space. And who's going to say no to playing with Steph Curry? So that might be a, a topic we can talk about with Chris when we bring him on. Like, is there a way that they can retool? Um, because he he knows all the salary stuff, but I don't keep up with it. Um, yeah, I think they're done as is. Do you think Steve Kerr, like, do you think they change coaches? I don't think they do. Okay. Do you think they I, Kerr and Kerr? I see a lot of blame on Steve Kerr, and Steve Kerr does deserve some blame. Mm-hmm. But... I, I I mentioned it like the the way they put this roster together. Mm-hmm. I don't know what they expected. Yeah, like Kuminga is. It seems more like Kuminga is trying to get another contract mm-hmm. more than trying to like win a championship. Yeah, you got guys that are like fourth and fifth level players that play a lot of minutes. Mm-hmm. Clay Thompson is cooked. <laughs> yeah. He he's not good enough to play his like he yes. was elite defender for the longest time and he's not he's, he's not, not that, that level anymore. defender anymore he doesn't shoot like he used to mm-hmm. Draymond Green punched your most talented young player he had to go and you still have Draymond yeah and he's the same Draymond mm-hmm. and it's not doing much for the young guys like with the situation given to Steve Kerr I don't know what list of coaches could have just easily handled this yeah yeah throwing in a, a, a ragtag team of young guys. Um, And then you throw in Chris Paul. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Who didn't play a ton or didn't do a lot of meaningful things. Like, I didn't even see Chris Paul, like, shoot the ball that much. He really didn't. Which, as he's aged, he's become a really efficient shooter. So, I feel like they could have figured out ways to set him up even um, in the corners or something. I don't don't know. But, yeah, it 
they need a retooling officially. But I, I think they got at least they got one more run before Steph's career is over. But yeah, the the Warriors as we know them are over, which is sad. It's sad. I like this. This is one of the one like dynasty teams that I enjoy watching. But anyway, the Kings. The Kings are moving on. They're going to play the Pelicans um, in this matchup to try to get in and play the number one seed OKC Thunder. Yeah, they are playing much more inspired than I expected. Mm -hmm. I think Kevin Herter's time might be over in Sacramento. Yeah, as much as as much as I like him, listen, Keon Ellis, mm -hmm. he's locking down on defense. Yeah, he was, and he's shooting. Yeah, like he's he's doing both jobs very well Mm -hmm. in his first time touching the floor in the playoffs. Yeah, so he's yeah his minutes have to stay high. Yep, and even like we said, Malik Monk was already playing better than Kevin Herter when he got hurt. So, yeah, I, I can agree with that. Come to the Pistons. Pistons need shooters. I, you, They do. <laughs> but, oh, my God. I, let's not talk about the Pistons. <laughs> okay, okay. The Kings, yeah. Darren Fox, uh, he's still, like, one of the most underrated point guards in the league, I think. Yeah. Um, His shooting uh, efficiency wasn't great, but mm-hmm. when you're the number one guy on a, on a team, you got to yeah. have games like that. Right. And Sabonis had another double-double. Mm-hmm. It's just what he's known for. Yeah. He just does it. Uh, Harrison Barnes, I think, is too, like, he's another guy that people just forget is on that team. And yeah. he's just, he's pretty consistent throughout his whole, whole entire career. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's always forgotten about. But he's he's played pretty good. Um, they got some young guys that are they're feisty. Davion Mitchell missed a lot of threes last night, but, you know, he's there for mostly his defense. Um, yeah, they just have... They just have some depth to them that I like. Um, and then Keegan Murray, like we said, had a huge game, actually, which would be good for them if he can continue to do that. So, yeah. The Kings Kings and Thunder, I think, is a good series. So, Should we talk about the Lakers? We kind of just skipped over them. Uh, yeah, we can. Listen, Nuggets and Six. Yeah. I'll give the Lakers two games because they have LeBron and Anthony Davis. Mm-hmm. And D'Angelo Russell is, like, having his best shooting season of his career. Yeah. I'll give them two. Yeah, I think they have a, a chance to win some games, but the Nuggets are just so strong. To have to play them is is tough. Yeah. Um, tonight's games, we kind of have a – to me, it's like a surprise because these are two teams that are top of the East normally. Uh, the Sixers and the Heat playing in the first game of the playoff. Winner gets to go up against the Knicks in a seven-game series. Um, how do you feel about this, this matchup tonight? I think Joel Embiid could dominate this game. Mm-hmm. But I have no faith in Philly. Okay. No matter how dominant Joel Embiid is, I know there's going to be something in the playoffs, whether it's health or just him not playing great. I expect Tyrese Maxey to play very well. Mm -hmm. What do you expect from the rest of the team? Nick Batum has been starting games for them. Yeah. Tobias will have one random 20-point game. Yeah, and then he'll average 10 the rest of the series. Mm Mm-hmm. Buddy Heald, I don't – Yeah, I've, I like him, but I don't know exactly what he's going to do in the playoffs. Yeah, I don't know what his role will be. He – because he's like the same player as like – not exactly the same, but the same thing as like a Kelly Oubre. Like come off the bench usually, can have a big night here and there, but you never know what you're fully going to get. So I don't know how their rotation is going to work. I think that's going to be my, my biggest concern for the Sixers. Yeah, I'm, I'm going with the Heat. Mm-hmm. Just off the principle that I just don't trust Philadelphia. Yeah. I- I'm kind of leaning the Heat as well. Uh, I-, I always forget that they-, they made that late season trade for Terry Rozier, um, which just gives it's them— It's had its ups and downs. Yeah, but it gives them another offensive weapon um, to, maybe- to maybe match up. And I just think they have more depth. Like, Duncan Robinson is playing good again. Um, do you know what the status of, like, Tyler Hero is? Uh, I'm not sure. Because he's been kind of injured here and there, right? Um, Terry Rozier is the only person listed as out. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. After yeah. I just brought him up. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, man, if Terry Rozier is out, who's their, who's their point guard? Do they have Kyle? Well, do they have Kyle Lowry? Kyle Lowry's in Philly. Yeah. See, I'm all mixed <laughs> yeah. up. Yeah. That's why I was like confused. So who's their backup point guard? Would they run? Probably just Tyler Hero. Tyler Hero, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. 
Hmm. I don't actually feel like the Terry Rozier thing makes it a little more interesting. I'm, I'm going Miami. I don't think it makes much, makes much difference. Okay. Either way, I'm hoping for a good game. I don't particularly care for either of these teams in the long run. But um, I think either team would have a decent chance at the Knicks. I actually think. Um, and then the late night game, the one we're all staying up for, the Hawks and the Bulls. America's game of the night. Yeah. <laughs> Um, the 36 win uh, Hawks and uh, the 39 win Bulls. Two teams that have just listen disappointed. Tell everyone how Andre Drummond is going to impact this game, Joey. Let Let's start there. I hate that there's like a love <laughs> for Andre Drummond kind of coming back to the league all of a sudden. Uh, like barely. All, all of a sudden, I feel like people are like just Chicago starting, fans. People are starting to talk about Andre Drummond again. Listen, he, like, he's a good mm, backup center. Yeah, but. Anything but more than that, I don't. I don't want to hear it. But people are always like, "Oh, but he led the league in rebounding for so many years. He has he has one of the highest rebounding percentages in NBA history." And good for and then, him. <laughs> at the end of the day, rebounding is a hustle statistic, which you yeah. go for. Which sure, I guess he's hustling for rebounds. But what else is he hustling for? Not too much else. Um, I'm glad that he's learned, though. He's talked about you know a lot of mistakes that he made when he was younger. I appreciate the growth. Um, but the Bulls, they were a team that I obviously liked because they got Vucevic. Um, they tried the DeMar DeRozan, Zach Levine thing. Zach Levine just can't stay healthy lately. Um, so their rebuild has not worked out. Kobe White has finally kind of turned it around, yeah, He's actually. been like one of the main bright spots. Yeah, at one point it looked like he wasn't going to turn into anything. He's been pretty good lately. Io DeSunmu has has kind of come on a little bit. Um, I think Alex Caruso has uh, maybe been actually the, like the big right spot. Yeah. Because he's been a two way, just like dog mm -hmm. his defense in that Knicks game, even though Brunson was going off. Yeah. Like he, he'll defend your best guard and he hit like three threes right. against New York too. Yeah. And then the Hawks are like almost in a worse boat because they seem like they had a brighter future with Trey young. Then they got DeJounte Murray traded away. John Collins. I think we mentioned it last week. Like they did all these things. And they're the tenth seed. Like that is rough. Listen, this is what happens when ninety percent of your draft picks, besides Trey Young, don't work. Mm -hmm. They're either average or bad. Yeah. The guys you've signed or traded for or traded away mm -hmm. haven't added any value. So Ooh. we got some big thunder. <laughs> yeah, we got claps. some thunder. Yeah, it's gonna be a little bit of storm, but. <laughs> Does that mean the Thunder are going to the finals? Who knows? Oh, man. Is this an omen? That'd be crazy. <laughs> but, yeah, the Hawks, they're in a bad position. Mm -hmm. Like, I, their fan base, I, I don't know how they feel. Mm -hmm. It can't be good. Like, yeah. them and Brooklyn. Brooklyn is in a worse spot. Yeah. Because they don't have a future. <laughs> they traded everything for mm -hmm. nothing. Yeah. So, they're in a worse spot. Yeah. But, yeah, the Hawks, they've made so many bad decisions mm -hmm. and just tried to, like, patch everything up. With glue and band aids, yeah, and it it just hasn't worked. If they lose tonight, is Trey Young gone? I hope so. I honestly, hope so. Okay. I want him to go to a bigger market, somewhere where he can be respected. Yeah, because I haven't jumped on the hate Trey Young train. Mm -hmm. I still respect a guy averaging like twenty seven and ten for his career. Yeah, he didn't make. He only made the All Star game as like a replacement this year. Mm -hmm. Didn't really get considered for Team USA. He, people just don't care about him. Yeah. I think I think both him and DeJounte Murray deserve better. And maybe partially it's that they just don't work well together or super well. Um, but they both seem to produce. It just doesn't produce winning. Um, so that one, I don't know. I think I want to see the Bulls win, but it would be sad, too, for the Hawks to, to go out like that. Um, all right. So those are the matchups for tonight. And then this weekend on Saturday is when the first round of the playoffs begin. We have the Magic and the Cavs as the first matchup of the day. How do you feel about that one? I'm always interested in <clears throat> series where there's two teams that, well, the Cavs have, have kind of made their small comeback in the past few years, mm -hmm. proven they can do it without the LeBron. Yeah. But since Dwight Howard left, what has been, what has the Magic been? Yeah, awful. They've been awful. Yeah. They had one glimpse where they made the playoffs with Vucevic mm -hmm. that one time, and yeah. they got one game on the Raptors, and that was it. Right. 
they somehow figured it out. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, sadly, this just reminds me again of how the Pistons have just messed everything up. Mm-hmm. And somehow Orlando, with a new young head coach and Jamal Mosley and a bunch of young guys, mm-hmm. just magically get it done. Yep. What what it, makes it, it pisses me off? What but, I can I can make it worse for you. You have the Magic with Paolo, a young Paolo, yeah, basically leading the team. Cavs, Evan Mobley's not necessarily leading their team, but he's he a young guy that was in the same draft class yeah. as Cade. Um, that's just that's just tough to think about. I like the Magic. I do too. And I I don't know. Like trusting Donovan Mitchell and Evan Mobley and Jared Allen mm-hmm. and Max Struess, guys with with like experience, right? It makes sense. Mm-hmm. But I I just like yeah the Magic. I are like fun, the Magic's core so much. Yeah, they're a fun team. I feel like they're a lot of they have a lot of versatility. Um, they've got a lot of length, um, and I just think they could be fun. Obviously, their biggest problem I would say is their guard position. Um. But it's not like their guards are bad. It just I, I feel like their rotation is always all over the place for me personally. Um, but Jalen Suggs has played pretty good as of late. Yeah, there. It, it's weird with it. There are times where Jonathan Isaac looks like the best defender on the on the earth. Mm-hmm. There are times where Mo Wagner almost looks like six man of the year. Yeah, like they they have glimpses mm-hmm. and games where they just look like when it all comes together, they can be like super dangerous. Yeah, and it's possible it still could be, mm-hmm. but yeah, they're, they're still very young. So right, yeah, the fact that they're here at this point so fast, mm-hmm. good for Orlando. Yeah, and then they got random. They got random shooters on their bench too. Like yeah. you forget about Joe Ingles. Not that he's gonna get a ton of minutes, but he might have. He'll, a he'll hit two or three a game. Yeah, yeah. I, I hope Orlando packs the arena when yeah. those games come at home because they they don't get these opportunities a lot. Yeah. Um, prediction. What do you got? How many games? You mean for you oh, think how many of Magic, games? but how do you think how many games? Uh, seven. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna think the Magic in six. Um, next series we got the Suns and the Timberwolves. I think this this could be fun. I'm I'm hoping it's fun at least. I'm going Timberwolves in six. Okay. I I think defensively, you got KD and Devin Booker. Either of them could go off. Mm-hmm. But outside of them, I'm not afraid of much of anybody else. Yeah. Even though, shouts out to Gray Lynette, Grayson Allen. Four years. He 70. shot the highest percentage of at three point in this in the league this year. Mm-hmm. I think it's like 45 or 46 percent. He's had a Super couple impressive. double digit three point games too. Yeah. But I think Minnesota's defense is high level. I think the X factor is Nas Reed, mm. and I'm just ready for Anthony Edwards to just take off. I yeah. I. I need the world to acknowledge him as like that new up and coming guy mm-hmm. at the two guard position. Yeah, he's an old school two guard, and I just, I love the way he plays. Yeah, I hope it's him versus KD. Be like matchups. Yeah, that would be weird. Him guarding a seven footer, but I'm sure Anthony Edwards well, will take I'm, it on. I'm sometimes. saying I hope KD guards him. I guess. Oh yeah, well, John, they're gonna put Jonathan Isaac on KD at, at most times. Whenever Jonathan Isaac is Jonathan game, Isaac, yes. Place for the Magic. Oh, I'm t- Oh my God, the Timberwolves. I'm getting, yeah, I'm I'm getting switched up. Is Jaden McDaniel healthy? Um, or did he get traded? It's actually a good question. <laughs> I can, I I can't remember. Jaden McDaniel is still on the team. Okay, I I don't know if they'll put him on him. I don't know if they'll go Naz. They might go Naz Reed. Yeah, because he's six ten and has a body that can move around it all over the floor. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, it's a really interesting. Matchup, but I'd yeah, I'd go Timberwolves in six. Okay. I'm gonna go with the Suns. I'm just gonna go with talent. I know it I think I would rather have the the Timberwolves win at this point. It's funny how we don't even mention Bradley Beal that he's Listen, on the Suns team. Ever since he got hurt, it's 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 just been so up in the air. You never know who which Bradley Beal is gonna show up. Yeah. I just think the Suns have a little bit more shooting, like you said, with Grayson Allen. Again, you forget they have Eric Gordon on the team, uh K D Devin Booker, I just think they're just a little bit stronger. The only the, the thing that I'm concerned about, I guess, with Brad the Suns. Brad has been really good recently. Yeah. I haven't even noticed. The Timberwolves' size is going to be pretty insane Yeah, with Rudy Gobert and stuff. So maybe they can figure something out. But they're going to have to play much better defensively um, for them to win, I think, personally. 
Um, and then we have the Knicks are going to play, um, like I said, the winner of tonight between the Sixers and Heat. Uh, the Knicks have been on a tear uh, to end the season, which is kind of fun, but I'm nervous that their their steam is going to go out at some point because they've been relying so heavily on Jalen Brunson. Um, makes me a little bit nervous. Do you think the Knicks have a, a good chance, whoever they face? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, and then finally, Lakers Nuggets on Saturday night. Like we said, I, I'm in agreement. I think the Nuggets just being the defending champs, they know what they're doing. Yeah. How do you stop Jokic? Um, the, the Lakers maybe get a game or two, but I think ultimately the Nuggets kind of do their thing. Um, and then Sunday we have the rest of the matchups. We have the Celtics are going to play whoever wins between um, the Hawks, Bulls, or the loser of the uh, Sixers Heat. <laughs> so the three-way possibility. Do you think anybody has a chance against the Celtics? I'm taking the Celtics. Okay. Yeah, I agree. And that could be a, a sweep, potentially. Mavericks and Clippers. This might be one of the more interesting matchups um, on the weekend. How do you feel about this one? I'm really up in the air on this one. <laughs> I want to take the Mavericks. Yeah. But the Clippers just have so many guys. Mm-hmm. That if they're if like two if two of them are on, it's like um, it's impossible to beat them. Yeah, it seems like it. Mm-hmm. But you got Luke and Kyrie on the other side. Yeah, I feel like this has to be this would have to be a huge Kyrie series. Luca has cooked the Clippers so many times, which is wild to me because they have guys that defend. Like Paul George is a good defender. Kawhi is an elite I, I defender. I just I think nobody can guard Luca. Yeah, I, his size and his skill I think is just too much of a mismatch against anybody. Yeah. It's just wild. You know what? I'll go Mavericks in seven. Just okay. Yeah, yeah. It's a wild card. My heart says Mavericks, but I think my head says Clippers. Um, I think it'll be. This would be one that I hope goes seven. Um, but I could see it. I could see it being something crazy like Clippers in five or something wild. But hoping for the best. Um, then we have the Pacers and the Bucks. Bucks are a nightmare right now. And they might be without Giannis. Did you see that? For a At little least bit. For the first, yeah. yeah. I'm taking the Pacers in the series. Okay. I I think they're better right now. They've averaged they're top five in scoring. hmm They scored one fifty seven in the season. Yeah. <laughs> like they, they got shooters. Tyrese Halliburton is one of the best uh floor generals in the league. Mm-hmm. He can also shoot the lights out. Uh I think the center matchup is really interesting. Mm-hmm. Miles Turner versus Brooke Lopez. I don't know. Kind of two guys that that do the same things. Yeah, but I feel like Miles Turner just being younger is much better at this yeah, moment. It is. Uh yeah, I'm really fu- I'm really excited to watch this one. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm taking the Pacers. Okay. I have no faith in the Doc Rivers Bucks. Yeah. I-, I think this is the case where like the Pacers just have so much more depth than the Bucks do right now. And I don't know. I th- again, this is what we talked about at the beginning of the season. I think this is where the Bucks really find out like how much Drew Holiday meant to this team. Yeah. Like not having that elite defender at the guard position. Like Tyrese Halliburton versus Dame seems like heavily in Tyrese's favor, to be honest. Now Dame can put up, you know, a 40-point game if Giannis doesn't play or something, but I don't think he he can't stop Tyrese Halliburton either. So, like their matchups just might be kind of weird, and I, I don't know. I don't I don't think their their defense is good enough, unfortunately. So, um, after that, what's the last matchup? I the just, Thunder. The Thunder. Ah, and we both think the Kings are probably going to beat the Pelicans. Yeah, and I think that would be the better matchup. Um, that's I would a- take the Thunder in six. Okay. I I think not having Malik Monk. If they have Malik Monk, I think there's a chance they could have upset them. Yeah. But I think not having Malik Monk is going to hurt. Yeah. Like a, you, you, I don't think you can depend on Keon Ellis mm-hmm. to average like 15 a game yet. Right. Yeah, I think the now that I think about it, like the Thunder match up pretty well against the Kings. Yeah. They can put Chet on Demonis Sabonis, slow him down a little Sabonis bit. Sabonis can out-physical him. But, yeah. But Chet yeah. will make him work just enough, I think. Exactly. He's going to take him out to the three-point line. Yeah. I don't think the Kings have anybody for Jalen Williams. 
to be honest. Um, they'll, they'll they'll have Harrison Barnes guard him. Yeah. So it'll be a Jalen Williams. It's all of their first times in these playoffs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, with that's, this type of type of hype. Yeah, their inexperience is going to be yeah. their biggest thing. Uh, Shea versus De'Aaron, that's the matchup right there. Yeah, that's I, I want to I want to see that six or seven games. The Kentucky guards. I just saw yeah. it. I didn't even think about uh-huh. that. Yeah, that'd be fun. Um, and then I think Keegan Murray's kind of going to be in the X factor again, probably in yeah. that series. He's going to have to keep shooting the lights out mm-hmm. for them to have a chance to win. Yeah, yeah. So that'll be a fun one. Hmm. I'm more excited about that. Um, okay. So those are the playoffs. Are there, is there anything else that you want to mention about the playoffs at all? Uh, just, I'm excited. Uh, I lost my love for the NBA regular season a while ago. Yeah, I think we, but I always look forward to the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Just watching the games this past Sunday, like the Bulls Knicks game was intense. Mm-hmm. It was exciting from start to finish. Everybody was like playing at their highest level. Yeah. It was it was just really fun, mm-hmm. and yeah, I'm I'm yeah just looking forward to who comes out in these playoffs. Yeah, who lives up to the hype and who falls on their face. Yeah, it was nice for me to even be able to to watch some meaningful NBA basketball and like actually enjoy it. It felt like I haven't been able to do that in a while. Granted, I don't I don't watch a ton of the regular season these days, um, except for like Christmas and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I, I'm excited to just kind of sit down and delve into some NBA basketball late in the season um, and see what happens. Cause I think there's a lot of, there's a good mix of like really young teams that have made a splash, like the thunder and the Timberwolves that we talked about along with like these veteran teams or like the Celtics who are a stacked team this year. Um, Can the Celtics finally get one with Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown adding Porzingis? I think that'll be a big question mark. Um, So there's a lot of good storylines I think in this, in this playoffs this year but uh yeah that's uh that's all i got anything else uh it sucks that Wimby isn't in the playoffs <laughs> yeah, it really does i don't think it'll take them too long it shouldn't but if uh, they can actually build a roster around them yeah i don't think it's going to be next year um the nba needs uh, is praying that it's going to be next year I, two years without Wimby, Wimby in the playoffs yeah. that that Hurts. I just don't know how they can do it next year necessarily. They gotta they gotta make some type of blockbuster trade or something. Because there's like, gonna be they a, could go after Trey Young. That's that's a good point. Yeah. That's a good point. Um because otherwise, like the draft class, like we said, is pretty weak. The free agent class is not that great. So they would have to make some sort of trade. Maybe they trade their top yeah. picks or the something. Hawks will would want some draft picks and Yes, a few more guys. Just a they'd probably keep Dejounte Murray. Yeah. So yeah, it just giving up Trey Young for a bunch of picks and yeah, future assets. Right. Otherwise, they wait one more year, and I think the free agent class is a little bit better. And at this point, the Spurs are going to be a place that people want to go play at. So yeah, I, I think they're going to not not going to have any problem with that kind of thing. So yeah, uh, Wemby in the playoffs will be pretty in, in, exciting. Um, all right. Next week, we'll we'll talk about some of the playoff series, um, but we'll mostly be focusing on our mock draft, um, NFL mock draft, because I'm not going to be here the, the week after the draft actually occurs, unfortunately. So won't be able to discuss the draft right away, but we will after that. So, yeah, this has been Views from the Sidelines, and we will see you guys next week. The Pistons still have Troy Weaver. Gotta love it.